Uh, hello, I'm Marta Cvić, I'm cardiologist working in Ljubljana, Slovenia. And I am here um, because Women as One asked us to talk about uh, women in a medicine, especially in cardiologists. And I would like to introduce my co-speakers. Yeah, thank you so much. Also from my behalf, my name is Julia Grapsa. I'm a car consultant cardiologist in London, St. Thomas's Hospital, and also editor in chief for Jack Case Report. It's a great pleasure today with Martha to discuss about what's the latest on women's heart. This year, we have a new guidelines, so heart failure guidelines. Um, but I would like also to mention uh, some new heart failure trials uh, presented yesterday at heart uh, hotline session. And one of the trial is um, step heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. That's a great uh, actually study, you're right, Martha. And it proved uh, almost 60% of the recruited uh, population was women. And this is one of the targets, you know, as uh, women as one, that to have more women included in trials. We saw that semaglutide, actually, which is a, a GLP-1 inhibitor, uh, reduced the appetite and uh, reduced the appetite. And also, it had a tremendous effect on six-minute walk test, on the quality of life. And also, we saw a significant reduction of uh, major outcomes, like they, uh, you know, when it comes to the primary endpoint. And we saw even in heart failure and cardiovascular risk factors that semaglutide helped a lot these patients to reduce the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And uh, now going to multimodality imaging and heart failure in general, what are your take home messages from ESC 2023? Um, yeah, regarding the imaging, I think um, that there were not a lot of topics discussing uh, women um, in different imaging modalities, so what is the outcome of women, for example. Um, and I think that we need more studies, um, especially uh, focusing on uh, what is the difference in the cutoff value of uh, imaging modalities um, between both gender. That's very true, actually, Martha. An interesting point is that we need more uh, sessions on women's heart. We saw an interesting session on ESC TV stage uh, yesterday morning, like Friday morning, on pregnancy and you know the uh, cardio and cardiovascular risk, and how important it is to separate the uh, pre and post menopausal era for a woman. And then, of course, there is a lot of discussion about you know the right imaging modality, the risk factors. So we need to be now more alerted about women's heart. You know how to get to choose the appropriate modality. When it comes, for example, to cardiobstetrics and pregnancy, how to choose the right modality to benefit the patient and balance this risk and benefit for the mother and the fetus. When it comes also to menopause, you know, uh, the, how to classify a, a woman according to her risk factors. So this is very interesting. What do you think? Yes, I think it's very interesting to Julia. And do you have the answer, what is the right modality for the women before menopause and after menopause? Yeah, so that's a, a very interesting topic. So when it comes, you know, to an earlier age and when a lady is, uh, when a, a female patient is pregnant, uh, first line, for example, would be always the echo, which has the least of radiation because we respect the mother and the fetus. And then, of course, we look into multi, uh, like advanced imaging that includes radiation with caution, mm -hmm. like CT, CMR. And uh, this is uh, mostly decided at the heart team level and now, for the first time, we see more teams in our hospitals, like uh, consisted by the cardiologist, the obstetrician, you know, the people who have an expertise in women's heart. And also, we see more and more women's cardiovascular health centers, this model that is widely applied in the United States, coming also in Europe. I think this is a very interesting concept. And then, of course, when it comes to menopause, we think more about having a closer follow-up for a female patient who is uh, like postmenopausal and uh, will need to look after her coronary artery disease. Uh, use then CT or CMR, for example, to exclude coronary microvascular dysfunction. So there is an endless spectrum of uh, diseases and choices. Yes, I completely agree. And we should not forget that also preeclampsia is a risk factor for cardiovascular uh, disease. So we need to be very precise when asking patient, for example, uh, old women about uh, their pregnancy. Um, but if we continue and we go from patient perspective to our perspective, um, we need also be too very careful when we are talking about radiation per, um, protection for us, so for doctor. Is there any uh, advices you would like to give? 
There was an interesting document published like almost a year ago and led by Professor Alaide Kiefo, uh, a combination of ESE, CVI, EAPCI on uh, the radiation protection for the cardiovascular physician. And you know uh, how the physician, and especially we as women, mm -hmm. uh, female doctors, we need to be protected from radiation. For example, when we are in the cath lab, uh, when uh, we do structural imaging, so again, there are now documents surfacing that uh, protect us as uh, doctors together with our patients. Yes. I think a very important component was also to recognize the tremendous work from women as one uh, in the recruitment of more female patients in trials, uh, the equa equity numbers. You know, these are great steps uh, forward in order to provide more uh, balanced studies and more real-world studies because they, this study of semaglutide is actually what we see in real practice, don't you think? Yes. So, if we summarize, uh, we can say that there, was, there were a lot of new results on this uh, ESC Congress uh, 2023, um, but there is also a lot of work to do, especially um, about gender differences and especially about a woman in cardiology uh, from perspective of the patient and also from perspective of the doctor. And at that point, uh, I would like to um, thank Women as One to invite us to be part of this short video recording. And I hope we will see you at the next ESC.